Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Strategic Command World War One, episode number seven, I think. That was a huge list of units we destroyed. I thought I'd show it off. Um, we do have this unit which is pretty outstretched, but I really hope we don't lose it. I did learn uh, very recently that destroyed units actually are a little bit different than I than I expected, unless we cut them off, surround them. So like this unit here is one example, or uh, the Russian second core, unless we actually cut them off, surround them, you can repurchase destroyed units as I can show from Austria-Hungary. They've lost two cavalry corps. Any unit with a star after it, so none of the cores but two cavalry corps, cost is 135, and that's because it's uh, charging only the price that it would cost to reinforce a unit from zero strength. So if I had like a one strength unit, just add another 11 or 12, whatever the rounding point is. And that's how much it would cost. So that's pretty, I, I think that that's pretty interesting. You can basically get, um, if, the, if you don't surround them completely, you can reform the core. It's gonna take a little while, but uh, yeah, anyway, I think that's all I wanted to talk about before ending the turn, moving on. Got some interesting stuff ahead. Well, I mean, the big question is, can we get to Paris? And if, I don't know if we can actually do anything about Paris next turn, um, but I'm still hoping, uh, so the Battle of Coronel, still hoping that we can position ourselves in at least three hexes, you can see over here. I should have zoomed in, stupid me, but yeah. If we get three hexes around Paris, I'm pretty confident we'll take it the turn after. If we're only left with two hexes on this turn, I mean, at the end of this upcoming turn. Okay. They've captured Sing Tao. Von Leto Vorbeck is doing his thing in Africa. We have an increase in airship development. So, we're going to have a lot of points next turn. <laughs> the the Austro-Hungarian units probably are just going to use all those points to reinforce. <laughs> Anzac sails set sail. UK sends naval units to deal with Von Spee. 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 I've listened to the pronunciations of his name a thousand times. I can never get it right. Okay. Oh, oh. Contact. Yep, yep. Okay. I guess we eliminated that armored cruiser. Okay. Some movement units. They have moved another unit into that <laughs> death corridor. <clears throat> free, free fodder for our units again. Again, I'll try to mention our losses first when the combats begin. So that one did get reinforced to 10. Two HQs pretty close to the, oh, well, three HQs pretty close to the front. I don't think they'll end that way, but. I'm really looking closely at my screen, so when the combat comes, hopefully I'll. Oh, they're really picking on that five, I'm worried. And the Russians even have some forces. So two, four. A good start. A two, four. A zero, one. Both very good. One, two. Ah, two, two. A two, two. A one, two. That's good. A one, two. A two, one, and we retreated. Actually, that's kind of nice. So I, I did leave that. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, that guy, the cruiser got reinforced. HQ's moving forward. I'm just waiting for this 10 to attack me. I, I, I'm like, 
incredulous. Is he out of movement points? <clears throat> I don't know what the hell. Did he get deployed there at the beginning of the turn? So he can't actually move? I would have thought that he'd be the, the grayed out. Or even, can this unit that's encircled attack? It's probably enough. I, it's, just, it's just teasing me. <laughs> Will he survive? I thought for sure when I saw that him down to one, I was like, oh, he's dead. But then, wait. Oh my gosh. I think he's gonna survive. Yes, he survived. Oh my gosh, he lives. <laughs> okay, but by the way, I just take a second to say, it doesn't matter that he's, if he's lost because of the reason I exactly just showed you. Oh, that's it, that's our turn. Um, we could buy him back at the reinforce rate since he's not cut off. It's just, I think it's just gonna be much better, one, for the attackers at least, it's better not to waste the time when you don't have a unit. Waiting one turn just, if I go and reinforce him right now, versus waiting two, three turns, and then I can only deploy him in my own country, it would be a lot worse. Okay, so HMS Sydney sinks the Emden. And I guess that gust of wind is, what, cold temperatures or something? So the only losses over the turn was just the armored cruiser. And then we disrupted only 13 points from convoys. It's a little bit disappointing. Um, and yeah, so we can cause some of the African communities to stir up some trouble for the French. I think it's worth it. And I definitely do want this Glindweir, which is going to become our seaplane carrier. Was it, it, it was Danzig? What do they call it? Was it called the Danzig? I can't remember. Okay, so we have two units, one sub, one battlecruiser. Um, I'll get to those in a second. Probably want to look around and see the lay of the land. Oh my gosh, I just can't believe this guy survived. <laughs> He's actually capable of doing one to two. His experience is 2.2. Unfortunately, it's going to be completely wiped out. Um, it's raining. I see. So what are we looking at? Two to move into planes. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit rough. We'll have to see what we can get done. Oh, one to five. I mean, I'm probably going to think about things for a moment at least, but I do want to see... I think that, um... Everything's done in the Russian area. I don't think there's any other force. I don't think the Russian Navy. So what I remember is the Russian fleet, which we can go to reports, and it might be interesting to kind of take a look at everything right now. This might be an episode which goes over 40 minutes because, you know, investing the extra time. By the way, I thought that I was... Ah, uh, I thought that I was going to get industrial technology. What I recently discovered is that um, when you invest the money, I, th I think, when it rolls over, this times two or whatever drops down. So I think that increasing it increases the speed, but you don't lose one, you only lose one of your investments per re technology research. And, you know, a lot of these have up to level five. So in these two, in spy and technology, it doesn't make sense to invest more than two. French warfare, we can go up to five, so it makes more sense to invest. We'll, we'll figure that, all that out. I don't even know if that's true, by the way. I'm just in my own, I'm playing now another game on my own time, and I found, I researched something, and I still had a point left over. Um, yeah, so let me just put that cut in here, and then we'll go to the Western Front, which is the most important thing. But basically, I think that we're, the Russian fleet has four ships left, I believe. Yeah, it has four ships left, and that's a light cruiser here, a light cruiser So, I mean, I don't know where, I'm pretty sure it's over in the Gulf of Finland, it left back to the east, I think, and it was wounded, pretty strongly damaged, and they have two ships in the Black Sea, I think a submarine and a battleship. Um, that's okay, so we're done with the Baltic Sea, we've dominated the Baltic Sea, we can move our fleet over and start, like, maybe finding little units of the Royal Navy that we can chip away at. Anyway, 
Most important thing, of course, let's see what we can do about pairs. Well, I looked at a few things here. It's not very clear to me what we need to do. I think the weather is unfortunately buying the French a bit of time here, but uh, at least I know what I want to do here. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Move this guy back. Move this guy forward. One to three. End up being a, not a one to three, but it's fine. I'll leave this unit here for now. Um, yeah, we can advance forward with this 10 and do one more hit. I think we'll do that. Got him. Okay, so that was pretty successful. We didn't end up even needing to use our six units, so we'll probably end up just reinforcing that one instead now. Um, two to two. Not amazing, but I think we actually could work on Nancy here. Now our airship cannot even fly in this weather, so we might as well just push him forward. Mm. Okay, well let's do the attack here first, because this one has, I think, two roads. No, that's not a road, never mind. But at least one road that can move in and help. Two, two. So we'll move you back here, I think that's fine. Move this 10 up, no, move this 9 up, do an attack. End up being a 2-1, which is not good for us, but that's fine. Uh, now this 10 moving up is also uh, not going to be able to attack. Uh, not going to be able to retreat out, so this is, oh boy, another 2-1. to one. Wow, our luck is not going well, that's fantastic, but at least we have done this nicely enough to wear them out. Okay, one to four. So we did gain a small advantage there. And I think what we actually want to do here is move and then attack, maybe. Let me actually not do that. Only I'm worried that nobody can get in. Ah, look at this, 10 can get in even. Perfect. And that means we'll move here and Verdun is now cut off. Why would I do that? I am pretty sure I was thinking about it. <laughs> Probably should have been thinking about it a little bit more than I did. I did want to cut this guy off, but I don't know now if we did the right thing or not. Is it worth it to try to take Shalon? 1.75, it's not worth that much. I mean, taking Nancy is actually crazy. It's four points and 25 national morale, but it's only we're only doing this because we have the opportunity to that we don't really need to obviously we don't we paris is the main objective that's the only thing we want to take this year okay so we need to start doing these attacks is it worth sacrificing this unit i don't even know it might be <laughs> Okay, all right, well, we need to do... See, I'm thinking that if we can wear this unit down, he won't... Is there zone of control issues right now? I think there are. No, that's two no matter what, so I don't... Maybe not. This guy's probably not able to do anything, the seven, except for attack. I think we're gonna have him attack and then move. Yeah, it was a 1 to 3 instead of a 1 to 4. I'm not going to complain too much about that. It's, it's still, I'm still happy, but... Oh, this 1 to 5 is just... It's, I have to do it. And it ended up being a 1 to 6, I think, in the end. We'll probably move... Here? That's <laughs> so tempting. And let's just finish him off with the cavalry. Okay, that's pretty aggressive. This guy might just, oh my God, it's a one to three. They're so weak. This nine probably can't do anything better than move in and attack the, well, we can cut this guy. He's down to a supply of two, so he's not gonna come back. Okay, I just wanted to make room for this guy, please. Okay, it was two to four, that was huge. Huge, so important, just huge. 
we need this HQ to move somewhere to get out of the way for the moment. So I don't I can shuffle these units. This is the you know the goofy part. Because I have to reinforce this guy. There's really oh my god, it's gonna be so expensive. Oh my god, it's a hundred. I I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Hal. I'm not I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Um, we could commit to moving this nine in here. And then this eight can move over there. Okay, I think we're just gonna do that. Okay, it was a true two to three. Oh, there's hope, and that hope is right here. Come on! Yes! Get in! Get in! Yes! Yes! Tortuga is excited! Oh, we did it! Okay, alright. Whoa, Nelly! Whoa! Wow. That was... That was intense. That was really intense. Um, what is your morale going to be at if I do this? Are you actually going to hold? I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I should fortify him and just let him eat a bullet. Even attack? I mean, I don't know. I frankly, I'm not sure what the best I, best thing to do there is. Um, this 9... Okay, so... There's an 8 here. I wonder if we if we just okay. Let's just take ruin this turn. Do I trust him? <laughs> the reason why I want to take ruin this turn is because if we do, we get more points. This one can move back, and this nine can probably move forward. Uh, he's not going to get to the front though. Nobody's going to be able to get to the front, so this... The only one who can get there is a 5, who I'd rather not... I'd rather not have him as a defensive unit. Okay, so the only way to do this properly is to have this 8 move south, have this 9 move here, attack, kill. And... Probably push forward. So we'll at least move him in here to, to capture. I'm not exactly sure. These guys might be better off switching, or I should push this guy down here. I mean, honestly, if we want units to cycle into Paris next turn, what we want is probably them cycling over this road. Yeah, the Paris fortifications are done not facing the northwest. Which is pretty cool. I mean, basically, I I like to role play this in my head. Like, oh, they didn't. The French were not prepared for the Germans to push so far west as to take. I mean, this is like where the Normandy landings were. <laughs> so we pushed pretty far, pretty far. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know if it's actually any benefit if there's any benefit for us moving this unit further. So the other question is, should this eight be be pushed south here? Or should he just be reinforced? Well, I guess that depends on if, okay, if a 10 can get to where he would get, then it probably means we don't need, okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is move this 10 here, because I do want, I don't mind if this unit abandons the fort for the Ardennes, he can only move here anyway, it's movement, it's three movement to move into this forest anyways, I'm pretty sure. So it's two, normal, but plus one from the zone of control, so three. Which means that he can't move anywhere else because this is forest, this is forest, and this is forest. So, and I mean, if we had zone of, that's assuming that we don't have zone of control. Who knows, if I put this here, does that exert zone of control? I don't, I don't know, and I actually don't think so, but um, yeah. But I don't think that this 10 is going to be involved in, the only thing we do is move him here, but. I think I think it's fine. We'll just move him here because we have one unit. Oh yeah, we have a good force march. I forgot about that. And this guy can get to this. No, he can't get there because the four will be there. Hmm. Do we want to move this guy further forward? Actually, we could move this guy all the way to the front. And by the way, somebody was mentioning, and I think I I just need to experiment with a little bit. 
I probably should be using the at least auto assist mode instead of full automatic for HQ. Um, essentially, I could, if I wanted, determine which units attach to which HQ at the beginning of every turn. Be a lot of overhead. I'm kind of like, I'm not a huge fan of doing that just because it'd be a painful, be a lot of work. <laughs> And getting these episodes out every two days has been, at times, extremely difficult. So, And we're still left with this question about what to do with this unit. Um, it'd be nice if they... Yeah, no, it's just... Nobody's going to be able to take his spot. So I think we are just going to reinforce him, eat it. Which may mean we don't end up getting research done. So what's, why is his supply say 6 out of 10? I wonder what 6 of 10, 6, 9, 5 of 8, it's not good, 6 of 10. Can you, I, I don't think so, 1, 2, 3, this would be 4, 5, I'm pretty sure. I don't think you can make it here. Ah, all right, well, let me just, let's just do this. Let's do this. This guy here, we most important is capturing Paris, so I think we just do it this way. Ouch. Down to 300 points just like that, but I think it was important to do. And we'll just probably eat all the points. Um... I don't know where this unit is best. I guess if I put him here, he can react further west. Don't think it'll be necessary to do that, actually. I could move this unit forward and then the 10 can get there. You know what, I might do that. You can actually move here and we'll park this guy in rune instead. Put this 10 here, okay. Something like that, I think it was okay. Probably need to put a cut in here. I mean, this was the exciting thing. This was what we wanted to do. First of all, we, I mean, let's not discount. I am most excited about the fact that we now border Paris on three sides, and that's going to be really hard for the French to re... That they're obviously not in a position to be taking strong offensive action. And the weakest unit of these three is only accessible by Paris proper. This unit is going to be able to borrow the fortifications to anybody who's attacking to the southwest from the southwest. We have a, I mean, they have headquarters on the front line, so I think it bodes well for us. Move this blimp closer. Probably need to move this fighter a little bit closer to the front as well. I mean, we were, we saw that he was, this group wasn't able to do anything this turn. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Leave this guy in Luxembourg because I think their, uh, their range is pretty good. I thought, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, I don't want him going here anyway, because the Verdun unit could just go suicidal and try to attack my HQ. So, okay, um, let's just leave things here then. I guess I might as... No, let's just save the shells. Save the shells. All right, let's scroll down here. I think I know what I want to do with the Navy anyway. This has no supply. I think what we're better off doing is just moving this guy into a position where... He can interdict both at once, or this is the only one, I guess, that's active. So we'll just move him here, and next turn we'll actually probably bring him all the way home. He had to do a lot of wandering around, and I, I want to get him back up to strength 10, because he's actually doing pretty good work. Out of all the other units here, you know what, this armor cruiser probably doesn't need to be here. But I'm not going to waste points on that anyway, so... <laughs> All right, let's see what we want to do down here. Nobody can get in 2-0, that's not good. 2-1. Oh, well, we can attack this HQ, which I'm very okay with. Let's do it. Okay, a 0-1 ended up being a 1-1, that's a big difference. And a 0-2 ended up being a 0-1. You've fooled me for the last time. So, some unfortunate turn of events there. If we want, we can keep pushing that attack with this 7. <clears throat> I don't know how... I think I, I'm going to leave this until I look at the Russian front. 
I mean, what I wanted to do was move that unit in. Why is this guy, oh. Uh, that's through roads, I think. One, two, three, four. I see, he could get there if not for zone of control. This guy would go one, two, three, four. Eh? No, no, this would be one, three, four, five, because it's a mountain. <laughs> so you can only get to it from the road. This is the only real access point. Well, the fact that it's a mountain means that we should fight better defensively in it. I kind of, I really want to go after this HQ. And I think repairing the six and leaving the, I, I just want to do it. I'm going to. All right, that was a great move. 01 ended up being an 02, so we did some serious damage to the Montenegrin HQ. And we advanced, I think we're in a good position there. So nobody is going to be able to get, I want to surround these guys, because this is the border, by the way, of Bulgaria. So if I do this, I cut off the capital from everyone else. Seems like a good idea to me. And if the only guy who can do that is you, then okay. Then you cannot reinforce this turn. It's just the way it has to be. And I might as well just reinforce that guy, but I, I think I'll actually leave the reinforcement for a little bit. Um, naval things up here, I, you know, like I said, I think it's just time to move everyone home. Our, our, the, the, we've achieved victory, as far as I'm concerned. So they'll just get, I mean, these armor cruisers do need to be repaired before I really deploy them. This is the battle cruiser which sunk the last remaining armored cruiser. It's a pretty cool little fight to think about if you think about it happening, but let's put this destroyer in. I actually do want to waste some points. I do consider it still wasting points, but I would I will quote unquote waste points um, on the destroyer so that I can mop up these minefields. They're no longer needed. I didn't know at the time that there's this mechanic where you can never deploy more mines than three. I mean, it, it's not true. You can increase your minefield technology, but I still think it's a very unrealistic, if nothing else, mechanic that you are not allowed to uh, deploy multiple mines over the course of, like, I, I would be stuck with these three minefields for five years. Uh, doesn't really make sense. Okay, we can also look at this. I guess this is pretty straightforward. I want to, what do I want to do? I think I might want to mine down here. Oh, I, oh, uh oh. Oh, this guy got brutalized, holy cow. My only hope is that, five, one. My only hope is that we could do some damage. Wait. I was gonna grab the submarine. I still haven't deployed the submarine and the other guy, but but this just dreadnought. Oh, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Got him. Oh, he did take two damage. Okay, well we need you to move <laughs> here to protect <laughs> our friend. They come from the north. They're gonna hit the minefield, so I'm fine with that. But let's protect anybody else coming this direction. And now let's get the submarine on the move. Don't know if it matters. Let's just go over here. Uh, okay. Oh. Oh, you've already attacked. Oh, oh dear. Well, I don't think they're gonna be able to sink a dreadnought. It's still early enough. Um. Huh. I don't think a destroyer's gonna do anything. I guess this one might as well go into port, and we still need to take care of the mines over here. But no, actually, yeah. Uh, as much as I want to do that, just go into port here because I don't think I need more than one destroyer clearing. <laughs> Shoot, I actually do need a light cruiser or something. Maybe an armor cruiser, battle cruiser, dreadnought, even something. No, where is the light cruiser with eight points? CL, 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 six, eight. There it is. So this one's going to probably deploy back over to this area, just to prevent the destroyer from taking damage. And you know, we'll leave this one. 
I don't know, it's just kind of silly that the minefields, once they're discovered, are ineffective. Um, it's actually okay. If, they, if you know that they're there, you just avoid them, but... I don't know. I guess the mechanics are a little bit strange to me. But, okay, so 30 minutes. Let's try to look at the Russian front before we mop up everything in the south. And I, you know what? I'm, I am going to cut away here just so I look at the front, make decisions a little bit faster. Okay, well, first things first. I noticed this headquarters can just move a little bit closer and actually puts them in range of these units. Um, otherwise, we can start getting down getting the work down here. Just want to take that territory. This 10 is not going to be very useful. I might even entrench him. Because he is holding valuable territory. I'm going to try to attack... I, the, God, we've got some funny things that are going on. So this HQ is really over... Like, it's so close to the front, I might go for it. But I think our first move is to try to wear this guy down. 1 3. 1 3. Instead of moving either of these guys forward, actually, I'm thinking about moving this guy forward because he can then attack the HQ. Wow, 0 3. Yeah, we'll take the 0 3. Which ended up being an 0 2, but that's fine. And we can actually. I didn't even think about this. We can attack this guy twice. Uh, well, it would end up being a 1 3. And an 05. <laughs> well, that's perfect. That's a lot of damage done to a very, very expensive unit. Um, I don't know. We'll probably move this guy back into the town. These guys are candidates for reinforcement. I am going to move this guy north and then entrench him. Because I need to provide some support for Tarnipal. This guy has much better, actually much. Oh, but the entrenchment is one if I don't move. Okay, so we're not gonna move. Despite the fact that I attacked that guy, we're not gonna move. And then we're probably gonna eat a lot of the reinforcements. That is a lot of, ugh, so much. Oh my God. <laughs> Do we have anybody down here we absolutely have to reinforce? Yeah, I think one six, I think this guy, just has to be reinforced. And I don't, this is a tool to reinforce them to maximum. I probably don't need to use that. I probably can get away with just reinforcing them to, well, I mean, Serbia, I gotta take out Serbia. Crying out loud, I gotta, I gotta make my move. It's a higher priority. So 300, 50, this is 110. So it leaves me with 190 left. It's another 70. 120 left. Um, you're going to do that first. That's 50. So I have 70 left. 20 minus 50. Yeah, I have 70 left, and I probably am not going to be able to take this guy up to full. Let's just pick on the most pressing units. I think this one. Uh, this one, maybe not. The readiness and morale are so low on all these units, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it is preposterous how bad they are right now. We're still at 200. This guy's the worst case scenario of all. Let's get him up to seven. Actually, I don't know if we do reinforcement. Let's Okay, let's get him up to seven. Can I continue to reinforce? No, actually, phew, that's weird. So once you make your decision, you're really stuck with it. Huh. I might want to do move this guy here and then have him re-entrench. That'll block my extremely low morale friend from getting hit. So let's do it that way. Let's do it this way. Um, you can just entrench where you are. Actually, yeah, you're in good shape. Let's just reinforce you. Oh, yeah, the Germans don't have... Well, okay, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with you, but... I think all of our movements over here are done. Except for this. And then entrench. 
mean, unless we lose Tarnapol, he might be attacked from the south instead. Okay, 154. Actually, it's not that bad. This guy is a great candidate. 45 and then 60. So, this guy costs how much again? 67 will leave me with 20. And that'll get this guy up to 7. Well, he's just kind of holding, so I think that's actually okay. We'll do it this way. So it worked out fine that this guy got up to 7. Because 7 is, I guess, the magic break point where um, you start losing morale. A 1 to 5, I'm always happy to see that. Got exactly 1 to 5. We'll probably move up and finish off the attack. What? <laughs> I don't know if that was a 1 to 3 that was predicted and it went 2 to 1. If that is the case, that's the worst luck I've had in a long time. Might as well just... And I see an HQ here, so I think I am going to push. It's a 1 to 1? Why? Why is it so bad? Wow. Oh my gosh. Nah, I think we're just going to heal these units. Yeah, I think we're going to end up healing. We're not, we're not going to be able to do anything, so... Well, we could do something here. Moving forward, on very unfortunately, is going to reveal information, so I cannot move him back. What I'm thinking is if we do this attack and move him back, we can do this attack. Okay, let's do it. Oh my god, a 1-1 one, 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 two to 1. Ah! He's in the marsh too, which is not a great place for defense, as you can <laughs> well imagine. Ah. Okay, I think I'm going to just heal these units. Oh my gosh, an 0-5. I'm so happy we did this. That was devastating. And now we're just going to rely on defending. So we have a 1-4 up here. There are a lot of units around. We're probably going to reinforce... Oh, we have 14 points. So we have... We don't have enough points to do anything. Is there anybody on the west front? Western front that we need to heal? I think everybody here has been tended to. So we have one unit who can get up. I think it's okay. We don't... Oh, this guy really needs to get up. Okay, so is there... Yeah, what am I looking at over here? No, I mean, we really gotta do this. This guy's this guy's threatened, even. I think the six is just gonna have to wait. He might be a juicy target, unfortunately, but I, the guy at Epinal probably can't do six on a single attack. Alright, we're doing it here. Just... Let's do this. Okay, one to four. It's fine. I'm fine with that. And I think we're done. These turns are happening a little bit faster. I have a methodology in place now, and it seems like that helps. Let me pause and see what else. Okay, we have a few things I want to do. Um, we have this nine. He's not going to be reinforced. We might as well move him forward. I think we'll move him forward here. So he's in position. Next turn, we can maybe take Pristina. Maybe attack Papek. I don't know what. Uh, but we want to put pressure. We want to keep advancing this HQ here. I also want to move this Sarajevo HQ closer, because right now he's actually not even in supply range of anyone. So it's nice it is it, as it is to sit on that city. We need this guy to actually help. So now he's actually in supply range of the, or HQ range of the people he's, you know, helping out. Um, I thought about moving this aircraft forward, because he's not in range right now for a lot of things, but I think it's fine to leave him here. Just, it's just the rainy weather, but you know what? At the same time, there's no disadvantage moving forward. This nine is now cut off, so I don't, I don't think he does anything next turn. Um, was other things, other things and stuff. Was it on the western thing? I think I'm also going to bring up the reports, by the way. So if you're interested in just seeing the turn, you don't want to know what the report status is. You can probably end the video here. I thought it was something. Here. Related to this? I don't remember what the other thing was. I'll probably remember it later. 
Oh yeah, I want to deploy units. Forgot about that. So, I may want to put the battle cruiser pretty close as well, because now we have this, you know, the upstart Royal Navy with their sea carriers, their sea seaplane tenders, um, meddling in my business. So I'll do that. Otherwise, I think this is where we want to leave it. The only last thing, as I said, I'm going to do is just look through the the graphs here. So. 56 units for Germany and 51 units for Russia. I think that's partly because of the brutal, brutal losses that, that we inflicted on them last turn. This turn, much less so, much more tame, um, which I attribute to the brain, or at least that's my excuse. French are down to 23 units. We can actually see almost all of those. Um, Royal Navy is at 20, France is at 12. Russian is at four, as I said, so we know both units they have up here, and we're at 20 as well, so we're doing pretty well for ourselves. Now, pretty cool, we could see the losses of everybody broken down in details. I haven't looked at, oh my god, France has lost 18 cores so far, and two cavalry cores, and marines, and detachments, and two destroyers, and dreadnoughts, and oh my gosh, 25 total. Uh, Russian's not in much better shape, having lost 11 core, one detachment, three cavalry, a pre-dreadnought, two armored cruisers. Now, unfortunately for us, we did lose a dreadnought. There it is. So we took out a French dreadnought. That was like retaliation for the Austro-Hungarian dreadnought they took out. That's pretty cool. I mean, we've lost five naval mines. This is such a weird statistic. <laughs> You have to get rid of your own mines in this game. I don't want to harp on it. We, we've lost... Uh, no, this is... Russia's lost two destroyers, two armor cruisers. One pretty, it's pretty bad. Um, I guess the summary of this is going to be shown even in a different way by points. If we go over to graphs. So one thing we I, I want to look on is just the points. So national morale, we can look at this bars up here and we can get a good idea. But the points here is pretty entertaining to look to, like analyze since it'll show you how many points they've lost um the spent on units i believe that that's reinforcements in game but it may be reinforcements in game and units that they bought like that are queued up for future like in the production anyway so um the british have lost three thousand points and they've only, they've only collected 1300 so it's about a one to 2.5 French have one to five, one to four ratio, which is horrible. They've collected about 1,500 points and they've lost 6,000. Go on to the Serbians. They've collected 300. They lost 1,400. The Russians have collected 1,700 and they've lost almost 8,000. Germans have collected 2,700 and they've lost about 5,600. So we're obviously we're suffering a lot of losses, a lot of losses as well. But we're at about a one to two. Austro-Hungarians have collected sixteen hundred, and they're mm, maybe like one point one to two point five. They've lost thirty eight hundred. And if you add all those up, I did this last. I think the math is still the same. Three, six. So we're at nine. Whoops. Okay, we're at ten point five. Let's call it. And let's just call this 75, so we'll call it 18. We're at 18 versus 55. Call that. Eight, five. So it's, uh, it's like a two to one ratio of losses so far, which is really good, because I don't think the income is at that. But um, national morale, we can take a look here. British are down to, oh, I guess I kind of want to know the exact percentage. So let's just take a look up here. They're at 90, French are at 82, Russia, or Serbians are at 77, Russians are at 78. Wow, they've really dropped. Uh, Germany are 103, for crying out loud, and the Austro-Hungarians are at 90. I don't know why they're dropping so much. It's probably because the soldiers are in such <laughs> bad morale, and we'll try to fix that. So that's it. That's uh, going to conclude this this episode. Um, pretty successful, and obviously, all eyes are on Paris. Will it fall before Christmas? 
I think that will be determined entirely in the next turn. So for now, thanks for watching, and until the next one, take care.